Yeah, welcome back to Think Tech. Uh, this is Community Matters. We're talking about the Manoa Heritage Center this morning, and we're delighted to have them on the show. Um, their executive is uh, Jessica Welch, and she joins us from Manoa. Am I right about that? You're right. I'm in physically in Manoa at Manoa Heritage Center, and I'd like to introduce my colleagues. We have Jenny Engel, who is our Director of Education, Ke'ala Wong, a cultural educator, and they are the team that um, engage the public with um, what we talk about here at Manoa Heritage Center. Hey, very important. This is in the heart of Manoa. Uh, it's got a hay out there, quite remarkable, and uh, it exists even today in the 21st century and is preserved by, by the Cook family. It's uh, really wonderful to have this treasure of, of island culture, Kama Aina culture, if you will, going back into the, what, the early part of the 19th century. And you guys carry the torch. It's, a, it's more than a cultural center. It's like a museum and cultural center <laughs> right there in Manoa. It's, it's well worth the visit. And today we're gonna have a, a bit of a tour, call it a virtual tour uh, with Jessica and uh, Jenny and Kiala. So Jessica, why don't you tell us the history of the mm -hmm. Manoa Heritage Center and how it got organized and what it is and why I should come to see it. So Manoa Heritage Center was founded in 1996 by Sam and Mary Cook, like you said, and the mission is to promote an understanding of Hawaii's cultural natural heritage. Um, but the story really started long, long before then. Um, Manoa it was part of the Ahupua'a of Waikiki, and so that goes Makiki all the way to Kulio'o. So it's a pretty big land division. And um, before Westerners arrived, Manoa was a breadbasket for this entire land division and grew highly cultivated forms of kalo, wetland kalo. Mm -hmm. And um, the Ali'i would come into Manoa to escape the dusty plains of Honolulu. And we believe that Kuka'o'o, the heiau, um, was an agricultural heiau because of its location here in the heart of Manoa, kind of on a taller precipice overlooking what would have been Lo'ikalo. And it's a time marker. The heiau is um, oriented diagonal north, which means that on the spring and fall equinox, the sun rises directly over the eastern side. And we've done that. We've gotten up early in the morning to make sure that that's true, and it, indeed it is. Um, so after Western contact, Manoa um, became a site of dairy farms, vegetable farms, flower farms. Chinese families took over the lo'i. Japanese families grew vegetables and flowers. And then, of course, you have UH and Punahou and Mipac, and then it became the neighborhood that it is today. Um, and then our story moves on to Monty Cook, who was the grandson of the Cook mission, who, the missionaries who came here to teach at the Royal Children's School. So he was given this plot of land for a wedding present. And he built, um, he decided to build his home here. When he was born, he was born at the frame house. So you can go down to Hawaii Mission Children's Society and that's where um, he was born. He was two and a half pounds when he was born and a Hawaiian healer was brought. And so this would have been the late 1800s, like 1870s. And that would scare a parent even today. Um, so he was brought, um, a Hawaiian healer was brought, Ka'ahaina Ka Naihe was brought to heal him. And she did. And they developed a friendship that went on through the duration of his life. Um, fast forward to the late 1800s, he's given this parcel as a wedding present and um, what is now 33.5 acres was 30 acres. He built a house here and kind of left the heiau alone. Fast forward to the 1970s, um, Sam and Mary Cook buy the house from the family. And then in the 90s, they buy the land back from a developer and decide to take care of it. And they and that, have. And they have. And so then, um, so they made the decision to restore it. They worked with a group of um, practitioners because they obviously had never done that before. And Billy Fields came and he is the kind of the renowned dry stack stonemason and he restored the heiau based on the information that he had at the time. And then um, they looked at each other. They replaced all of the plants surrounding the heiau with um, native plants. And then look, they looked at each other and said, now what? What are we gonna do now, now that we've done all this work? And that's when they started Manoa Heritage Center. And they said, well, we should share this with um, schools in particular and 
So that's been our focus for the last 20 years is making sure school kids have access to this site. Yeah. So it is comprised, of course, of the Heiau. Um, by the way, what is an agricultural Heiau as opposed to another kind of Heiau? Keala, do you want to answer that? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> first, yeah, you have to introduce them properly. Okay. I want to introduce my colleague, Keala Wong. She's our cultural educator, and she could answer that question for us. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. So, uh, I mean, all that we know from historians, uh, written records, and also from um, people who have passed it down orally, uh, you know, the, Hawaii, the people of Hawaii were very sick, or everything was sacred to them, right? And everything that they did, they would say prayers. So, um, I've heard from my kumuhula that they would pray like 50 times a day. It was just normal. Um, and so they would build places specific to certain needs and prayers and they would have certain um, deities that were um, praised at these sites and so other heyals that or not even everyone uses the word heyals but other temples um, that were common were like pohaku akane or pohaku akane which would be more like the family kind of shrine which would be one rock that was erected up. Um, and then of course the Gluakini, which were the, um, real, um, what's it called? Political kinds of heels. So larger, um, demanded more attention um, and had bigger ceremonies than like an agricultural one. Like the one we believe is what we're taking care of here, Kuka'o'o, which is a little bit smaller. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so um, back to you for a minute, Jessica. So aside from the Heiau, uh, I recall I was there a few years ago and I recall there's a lot of walking paths around the mm -hmm. uh, Her Heritage Center uh, and a, a, lot of, um, a lot of plantings uh, you know, on those walking paths. Can you describe physically uh, what's in the center? Oh, so the plants in the center, so in the early 90s, Mary um, decided, Mary Cook, that she wanted to plant native plants. And so she took out all of the rubber trees and the banyan trees. And um, back then they didn't have nurseries for native Hawaiian plants. And so she likes to say that she had to beg, borrow and steal to get seedlings. And um, she got, you know, um, plants from the Na Native Tropical Botanical Garden and Amy Greenwell on the Big Island. And so today, as you walk through Manoa Heritage Center, you see different examples of Hawaii's native plants. And these are important because they tell the story of Hawaii's culture. You know, every plant had a, a lot of uses to it, you know, whether it be shelter, food, medicine, um, hula. And so the more we know about these plants and um, their place in um, the culture, the more we understand about ourselves. That's so interesting that, you know, you, you see, <clears throat> at least in recent times, Manoa as a bedroom community for the university mostly. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a regular residential neighborhood. And you can drive by Manoa Heritage Center a thousand times and never realize it's right there. <clears throat> 30 acres of land and you, you don't see it from the road. Uh, and there it is in the very heart of Manoa. It is the heart of, of Manoa. And somehow it keeps Manoa, Manoa, if you don't mind my expression. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great description. And it's, it's three point, it, originally it was 30 acres and now it's 3.5, but we maximize every single amount of that space for the benefit of our community. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk to uh, Jenny for a minute. She's, a, she's an historian. And uh, after all, you know, you guys, as the people who conducted tours and, and talked to visitors and all that, you, you bring it alive because uh, some of this you, you, you can't show. It's, it's history is what it is. So, uh, Jenny, talk to us about the history of, of this area. Uh, well, you know, it's so interesting, us. Jay, that you bring that up about you can drive past this place hundreds of times. Um, I actually grew up just half a mile away from here. Um, so I grew up right behind Waioli Tiram, um, and actually um, I really had no idea about the Heiau until 
Um, you know, I came here for my interview four years ago. And so that's so true. And I, in the four years that I've been here, I've learned more about Manoa than, you know, my entire growing up. And it's, it really has been so rewarding. Um, I think not just because I grew up here, but because I live on this island and I feel like the connection that can happen um, just when you ask questions, when you're curious about place, especially um, in Hawaii, because place has so much meaning um, and all of the mo'olelo, all of the stories, um, you know, that were passed down orally. Um, I mean, it really kind of opens up a whole nother perspective, I think, um, and one that is really needed today. I mean, um, with all of the challenges that this year has brought, I feel like um, what we do is more important than ever, you know, sharing um, this place, specifically Manoa to students, but like Jessica alluded to earlier, you know, with the hopes that uh, visitors, students will come learn about this place and then be inspired to go back to wherever they live and ask those questions about their own place, whether that's in Hawaii or, you know, in another state or in another country, so. Yeah, you give tours, is that what happens? So if I come now and I, and I wanna see, I wanna appreciate it, you'll take me around and show me the hey, I'll explain the history. Yes, um, and you know, all, because that's a great uh, point, just because we're a small organization, all of, we do offer tours. Right now, of course, it's a little limited with the current restrictions, um, but in general, because uh, Kuali'i is still a private residence, um, you do need a reservation, you can't just, walk on. Well, you might be able to walk on and I'd give you a tour, but not anyone. You usually need a reservation in advance. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, sure. And Well, COVID, I'm sure COVID, Jessica, has changed things for you. Um, yes. And I, I like to know about that. I mean, it's very frustrating, but at the same time, it, it, it makes you innovate mm -hmm. it, and you find things perhaps that you wouldn't think of before. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. Yeah, COVID. Um, so we um, typically have 75 kids here a day um, going through Manoa Heritage Center and um, doing hands on activities. So our mornings are spent with groups of students. But obviously, starting in March, we, we haven't done that since March. And so um, which means that we had to innovate and we had to stop doing that. And then now um, built virtual resources. So Jenny and Kiela have worked really hard to create virtual tours for teachers and they customize them based on the teacher's needs. They um, have done curriculum based on what we call the water hood. So examining how water flows in your space, you know, from the mountain down to the ocean, but what it does in between is really interesting or maybe what it should do and what it isn't doing. And so they've created videos and presentations that, um, and we um, use Zoom or WebEx to engage students in that way. So that's been something, those are things that we've always wanted to do, but never had the time. And now we have the time to build those virtual resources. We're also taking this time to stop and reset and think about how we interpret this history and wanting to have a more inclusive history. And so we're, um, doing a lot of work to be of our community, by our community and for our community. That means that we bring the community in and is, they're reflected in our staff and our um, volunteers and work with them to reinterpret Manoa Heritage Center rather than doing all this work for someone. Yeah, so who comes? I mean, is it uh, tourists? Uh, is it local people? Uh, a bunch of Howleys, a bunch of local people, <laughs> but who comes? Who, who will, can you give us a kind of demographic of yeah. who comes around for the tours? Well, the nice thing about COVID is that we've had a lot of Kama'aina come and a lot of Manoa residents, you know, people who walk past here all the time walking their dogs and they finally have the time to come and visit and see, you know, what is this place? And so we've had a lot of Manoa residents and um, that of course is a target audience for us because we wanna make sure everybody in Manoa has access to this resource. And, um, and in terms of you know, race, I would, I would say it's, it's all of the races that are reflected in Hawaii come to visit. Um, prior to COVID, we did have um, quite a few tourists, but we've always been focused on the local community first and making sure we have programs that engage them. Um, like for instance, we would have um, workshops with practitioners on Saturday mornings. 
and we'll probably start doing more of that in 2021. We'll resume, pick that up in 2021 on a small scale. And those are all Kama'aina. So our theory is that if you focus on Kama'aina, um, the tourists will also enjoy, enjoy it <laughs> ra come. rather than the other way around. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You, you want to remain as, as pure cultural as you possibly mm -hmm. can. Speaking of which, Kiala, um, you, you know, it's like uh, Hawaii, Hawaii had its grand day in the 19th century. Uh, that, that's, that's when it was still a kingdom. Uh, that's when it was, um, you know, luxuriating in the, in, you know, in the pure Hawaiian culture. And so my question to you is, you know, as a researcher, as a cultural researcher, you have to be studying that period of time. What do you study, to, you know, to, 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 to find all of what there is to find? in Hawaii culture? Well, that is actually, <laughs> that's actually, there's a lot. Um, and so just to mention that we are currently just kind of trying to expand um, our perspective. Um, and so for a long time, the history of the 19th century was told through kind of a certain lens, right? The lens of the, um, Westerner, because those are the resources available in English. Um, and so there has been a, a big, um, I guess, need and want for other perspectives, especially the Hawaiian. And there's a lot of newspapers from that time that uh, place it, or who is like Avayaulu Ava, Ava and Avakonohiki who are making the, their online resources. Um, they're making these Hawaiian, uh, previously just in Hawaiian, but now translated into English, um, available to the wider public to get more perspective on the, that era. Um, personally, I, I'm more of a makahana kaike, so hands-on kind of learning. And so my interest um, in research is doing the practices. So I'll see something in a book or I'll um, see another practitioner on social media doing something and then bring it here to work and let us let us experiment. And I'm very blessed and fortunate that all of uh, my coworkers, or I like to call them my, um, my co-mates because we're like all mates, we're really good friends. Um, we get to dive into these cultural activities together and it's really fun. Yeah, so are you documenting your your work? And uh, are you documenting it uh, in a way, uh, perhaps on a, on a website or virtually so that, um, you know, you, uh, you know, Jessica and I were talking about how you have a little time now. Um, you can do things you might not otherwise have had the time to do before. Are you taking this period to you know, write, write anything new down or make it available to people. Um, Jessica, uh, what's the plan? We are, um, we apply it like kind of a citizen scientist approach. And so um, there's a special drawer in Keala's office that has all of the documentation of the different, for instance, experiments with um, Kappa and Dai. And um, we document what we do. And then the next, the challenge, you know, it's, it's kind of easy to, take a video of something, but then editing is where um, the time comes in. And so that's what um, we need more help with is, um, is, is editing all the wonderful content that we have and packaging it. Um, well, you know, we're, we're here, to, we're you're here, here for that's you, right. you know? That's we're right, we could partner on that. Yeah, that would could. actually be awesome. Speaking of um, multimedia, why don't we take a look at your slides okay. uh, to help, um, you know, give some three-dimensional view of this. Okay, let's put the slides on and, and you can describe what we see. What is that? So this is um, one of our practitioners. We, we, one of our favorite things to do is work with cultural practitioners and, um, and give them an opportunity to share no their knowledge and then us an opportunity to learn from them. And this is Kumu Aloha Kikipi. And she is um, sharing uh, how to weave um, using hala. And um, this, this student that is here um, is somebody who just came to one class once and then um, a year later actually wove her first hat. So it's, it's an example of, of, you know, a beginner not knowing anything, but then being able to take it and, and now she sells, sells um, 
woven hats. This is Kuka Oheo. So this is similar to the view that's behind um, Keala. And um, there you can see um, the north orientation and the view of the back of the valley that you see um, when you're standing up there. Okay. Another view. We often have, of course, rainbows in Manoa. And um, this is one of those days. That's true. Rainbows, it's, rainbows and Manoa, they go together, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big part of our story. Yeah. yeah. What's, what's this? So this is Ka'iolani de Silva, de Silva who um, is a hula, well, kappa practitioner rather. And so you can see here some of the samples of her work and all of the plants that she uses to dye the kappa. And you know, kappa is, was used for clothing, bedding. And here in the garden, we have examples of the tree that you would have, the valke tree that you would have made kappa from. So you can follow that um, process from start to finish as well in, in our workshops. Okay. Oh, there's more. And so this is um, one of our volunteer docents. We have a really um, dynamic um, volunteer docent program. And these are people who love history, love culture, and then love sharing it. We have a lot of retired school teachers who are part of this group. And this is um, actually Leslie Turnbull. She is um, part of the mid pack Ohana, and she is telling the story of Manoa to a group of school kids. That's great. Five minutes away at mid back. <laughs> mm -hmm. And of course, Ohilehua when it's blooming. Uh -huh. I think that's the last one. Oh, thank you for that. So a, a couple of thoughts come to my mind. I want to run them by you. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Number one is the, the, um, uh, there's a, um, there's a, a, a plant I'm blocking on the name is a plant, um, a repository of plants um, up the hill. Mm -hmm. so if Lion. I go back, say it again. At Lion Arboretum, yeah. Yeah, the Lion Arboretum. Do you, do you get plants from there? Because the, a lot of those plants are extinct mm -hmm. and they're native. They're all native species, I think. That's what they have at the Arboretum. Um, you get plants from there because that would be a great source, no? Absolutely. Um, we, I don't think we get plants from there, but we, what we do with Lion is partner. And so we partner with our education team. We have um, a NOAA grant right now that's where we partner with NOAA. I mean, sorry, partner with Lion Arboretum and Waikiki Aquarium to make sure to understand the watershed. Um, and then we also tap into their, they have incredible knowledge about plants. And so if we have a question, we, we call up at line, but, and we've, they've allowed us to go up there and harvest for our hula camp. Oh, oh that's a great connection. Yeah. Yeah. The other free association point I want to ask you about is it's the Mission Houses Museum mm -hmm. it has a thing. It's a cemetery at the Oahu Cemetery. Yeah. Poo -poo Theater. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Poo, Poo theater. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where they have, uh, it's really, it's really chicken skin. They, they have, um, actors who, um, who tell you, who, who take on the role of people who lived in, in the 19th century. Um, and they sort of arise from the grave <laughs> and, <laughs> and they tell you the life story. And it's very interesting because and there are half a dozen of them in the tour. So you go to one, you go to one, um, gravestone and, he tells you, oh yeah, that guy Smith over there, I really, I didn't like him at all. And then you go down the other side of the cemetery and there's Smith. And he's telling you he didn't like Jones at all. And they had a little business dispute and they sued each other or what have you. And it's very, very interesting to see the, so do you ever have that kind of um, experience? I mean, do you, do you ever try to do play acting with, with people with actual personalities? They, the kind of the, um, some former staff members did a little bit of that. They had some, some, they call it living history when you um, pick some actors and do a lot of research or pick some historical characters rather and do a lot of research. Um, and some people love it. Um, we haven't done that ourselves yet. No, but, but you have a special personality at the Middle yeah, Earth yeah. Center. It may not be the same as, as other uh, Hawaiian cultural organizations. Right. But Kiala, you mentioned uh, your, your kumu and uh, my wife has a kumu and kumus are important, you know, to 
pass down wisdom and culture points. And is there is what does it mean to you, and what does it mean to Manoa Heritage Center about the hula? Well, I am new to hula, um, just a little over a year, and I met my kumu hula um, Loko Olu Quintero actually when he came with the kupuna program uh, for the DOE. They came to visit. And so we connected here at MHC um, and he was so willing to share his, his knowledge with us. And, you know, that was really kind and amazing and um, offered hula for me. And so since then I've learned hula and oli with him and kumu ihi lanichu. And it's just, it really expanded my, um, my Hawaiian experience with myself and with the aina. Um, and I think he actually kind of is all of our kumus because he, he really does help all of us. And um, if we ever have questions or need some guidance, you know, he, he's both of them are right there. Um, it's, great. it's great to have a kumu, it really is for sure. Oh, there's a question we have. See. Oh, how is Manoa a Heritage Center funded, Jessica? Oh, good question. Yeah. Good yeah. question. Yeah. So um, we have an operating budget of about $600,000 a year mm -hmm. to run this place. And um, the bulk of that is funded by donations from individuals. So there are people in the community who support Manoa Heritage Center and also grants. Um, so we cover our budget that way. We also, at the same time, raise money to um, grow an endowment so that we don't have to um, raise our entire budget every single year. Um, Mary Cook, Mary, Sam and Mary Cook have um, been extremely generous in setting up that endowment and so that um, we can have some security in the future. A lot of people think that Mary writes a check every year, but that's not the case. But she, of course, they did donate the land and, and everything. Ah. So um, I guess the thing is, you're, are, you, are you able to continue? I mean, what I mean is what's the future for Manoa Heritage Center? How do you see it unfolding over the years to come? Well, um, Mary's dream, Mary, um, when she um, passes away, she wants to give her house to Manoa Heritage Center. And so that would be part of, become part of our campus. And so we um, would then have a historic home to um, be able to share with the community. And so we're actually in the, doing an ex visioning an exercise right now to like, dream and you know, how could this 3.5 acre space in Manoa best serve the community? And we have lots of ideas. Um, one thing that we're doing now is making the garden more um, community based so schools come and take care of specific sections of the garden and they come once a week and take care of it and then are able to harvest the um plants and the oh the that's food. great it's that's great, great. practicing yeah. exactly. practicing ancient uh, agriculture exactly. that's lovely so, <laughs> so we want to do more of that and get um you know just provide a space where people can get their hands dirty and also talk about heart you know some of the parts of history are hard to talk about and they're painful and we want to um, use this space as a healing space so that we can um, ex dive in and, and build bridges. Very, very valuable, noble even. So Jenny, you get the last word, <laughs> okay? And, <laughs> and, and the, my question for the last word is, why do you do this? And why do you think Keala and Jessica do this? <laughs> uh, I mean, you're, you're dedicated. Um, I'm sure it's hard to, to, you know, to keep on trucking, and especially in the time of COVID. Um, and what, what does it look like for you personally and as a, co a career? You know, I think um, this is one of those um, kind of serendipitous organizations and teams, um, our work, Ohana. You know, I think that because we are all kind of on the same page in terms of um, working here at Manoa Heritage Center, sort of uh, fulfilling Sam and Mary's vision. Um, it's one of those situations where I really feel so grateful uh, to be able to come here every day, 
uh, to work with these ladies and Kevin who's the one gentleman on our team um, and just do this work. I think also because we're a smaller organization, I think we're able to, um, as long as we know that we have to put in the time to get it done. I mean, there's very few obstacles, I think, to what dreaming uh, and making something com come to life. So that's really nice. And then I, I know um, from, you know, my past experience has been in a bigger organization. And so I know that, you know, that's not always the case, so. Okay, if I, if I asked you for one word that describes your perception of the Manoa Heritage Center that you would like to leave with our viewers, what would that word be? Um, that's a hard question. <laughs> I have to think about that one for a second. Okay, we're going to come back to you. Okay. Kiala, do you have a word? Uh, peace. What is it? Peace. Peace. Yeah. Ah, what a lovely word. A lovely word. Jessica, have you got a word that you'd like to leave with our viewers? Um, grace. Grace. All right. Does that help you, Jenny? Can you come up with a word? <laughs> Good word. Um, I guess mine would have to be aloha. Aloha. Aloha, peace, and grace. Thank you very much, Jenny, uh, Jessica, and Kiala. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, aloha. Aloha. You're welcome. Aloha. <laughs>